to the UV index is at a 4 which is moderate but you know what common practice are oh yeah don't forget the neck So what you just saw is active recall and space repetition in real time. We really had to make use of the commute time to be able to pick up on our revision. Alright, so right now I am meeting up with my friend for lunch and then having class. Alright, almost there. What did I want? All right, right here. All right, it's called Fa Yun Tan Tan. It's one of the very local sort of steakhouse here in Hong Kong, but uh, we just love it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> 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 No, no, this is really fun. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I just designed here. I just used it. I bought it like seven years ago. But, uh, Yokdong Yivan. 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 I got invited to be one of the actor oh. patients. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was acting. I was acting the doctor. How are you, Chen Lu? Today, what are you doing? Ah, my toes are very sore. You don't know. Ah, really, very hard. Now, you are going to have to slowly and gently assess your symptoms, and then see if there is a solution to help you. But the reason why I think it's worth documenting because now. Put myself in the shoes and I read you the my uh, like the patient's role that I need to be. Second year medical student suffering from insomnia on and off since you started the university. Huh? That's me. That's you. It's only now insomnia. Uh problem seems to have worsened. You're very worried about the sleep problem, you feel that it's interfering your academic performance. Some nights, you still wake up at 4 30 serving the internet, only getting through 4 hours of sleep. One of them prescribe some sleeping pills for you. Wow, that's just a typical day in the life of a medical student. <laughs> Either the doctor or the patient in preclinical uh, year. So today I got assigned to be acting like a patient who has some sleeping problems. And this class is really the one of few times where we get to put ourselves into the shoes of a patient. Now we always say like empathy it is one of the important traits to be a doctor. And today it is the time where we get to show that. Alright, now I am on the infamous 
Sa Asundo. This is uh, the steep slope that uh, we have to climb at the sand every day. Let me show you on a very interesting spot here. Literally, literally just enough for one human body to pass through. Alright. Alright, let's go. Why they set aside this course is that uh, they don't want uh, the teaching in the faculty to be you all want to know about diseases, how to diagnose, how to investigate, how to treat this aspect that is very important that is ignored so that's why they get those calls so you, you, you do not need to be in, uh, in a medical field to be empathetic isn't it? Um, people would like you to be empathetic uh, in simple words to see from your own from the other person's perspective the frame of reference switch around this is very difficult um, we all tend to be self-centered looking from our own perspective all right? uh, it's not easy to see from the other's perspective Alright, so I just finished the class and uh, I guess I want to talk a little bit on uh, my feelings after the class. Several things that sort of uh, made me reflect a little bit. First of all, it's the difference between empathy and sympathy. I remember in the class we were presented a chart that basically breaks down and sympathy into different elements. So, well, we said that empathy, empathy, you have feeling with the patient, but you don't have the emotion. Huh? <laughs> that is something uh, you have the feeling, okay? But you, you don't have the emotional process, okay? It's not totally detached, still some feeling, okay? And then uh, the mental process is important. You separate your own feelings from the patient, okay? All right, sympathy you share when the patients cry, okay? You also cry, okay? That is sympathy. Okay? And display of pity by the carer, okay? So you don't display pity, okay? My junior display pity by crying, okay? All right? So uh, requires effort, concentration, and discipline, of course. You are a human being, okay? You want to cry, okay? But you stop the tears, okay? So you, you find some restraint on yourself, okay? And while it is useful to have a diagram from a teaching point of view to let us know what are the differences, what are the elements included in empathy versus sympathy, it is obviously in real life harder than that. It is, it is not something that is very black and white. You meet this certain criteria and such that you're empathetic. Um, but I think this really one single quote uh, from the lesson really sums up what empathy is. All right, uh, it is quoted a person called Rogers. What, uh, what he described as empathetic is to enter the private perceptual world of the other and become fully at home in it. Like the, I think another point included here is that to be a doctor, it is not always for you to show empathy but also sympathy a lot of the times people put a major focus on like you being a very empathetic doctor but sometimes a balance between empathy and sympathy is needed i've told you that i, I i'm a geriatrician okay so as a geriatrician we will be seeing a lot of dying patients we have been very acute you know the number of acute geriatric beds we have it's more than 100. I think uh, it's something unusual nowadays. Uh, say, Queen Mary Hospital, how many acute geriatric beds have you got? By acute geriatric beds, uh, beds, we mean direct admission of A and E. And uh, in those days, we choose the age cut off. 
So obviously you have to choose a very high age cut off in order to accommodate the patients coming in very acute. Okay? So the mortality rate is as high as ICU. And one fine thing, a very uh, hardworking and, uh, and we all like him, uh, a junior, okay, uh, in my unit, or in my department. We have separate, separate department of geologics in those days. And we recruit him uh, right from Inter. Uh, he, he, he signed from my department. I feel very sad about this. Uh, I'm, I'm the in charge because he's so good the doctor. Okay? And he told me the reason, okay, he, okay, is that he couldn't help seeing so many elderly patients dying. And seeing the family, okay, the close family members crying when the elder person died. Okay? A lot of those scenes. And uh, he find himself helpless. And what he did is that he cried together with them. Okay. He could not just could not tolerate. Okay. So he has to leave. Now of course now he has chosen a different career, okay? He's a consultant radiologist, okay. We are still in contact, okay. Despite that he retired uh, as a junior, okay. When I I mean not retired, he resigned as a junior. Uh, the day when I retired from the so he came back to join the um, farewell. We are still in touch. So uh, that gives me the feeling I'm not preparing well for my colleagues in how to face death and dying. Because you, you see, I, I don't know whether in your curriculum you have come across uh, or you have been prepared for death and dying. Okay? But this is a very good example of sympathy. You just won't stay there and watch them cry or just walk by. So you are moved, okay? You felt with them. That is sympathy. Now there's something that, of course, it's just because he could not tolerate this going on. Find that he's not helping, and seeing that they come in, they just die so and suffer. So as a doctor, you're expected to do everything to reverse, all right? But uh, he find helps. Of course, he's junior, okay? I I keep on because I find it. It's not just interesting, okay? But it's challenging. I can help them, and sometimes I can reverse the pathway from uh, uh, not not just death, okay, from functionally getting worse, but I have to find out why that is diagnosis. Why? What are the problems? How to solve it out? Okay. So uh, that's why I keep on. And that's why I also uh, ask the question of where do you draw the line? Like, how do you? In what scenario do you display empathy? In what other scenario do you display sympathy? So do you think a doctor needs to be more empathetic or sympathetic? Or mm. sometimes... Would now, my teacher told me, and I think so is here, you need to be more empathetic than sympathetic. Okay? But I'm telling you, you need to have the right balance. It's not either one is true. Just to prepare you ahead. And finally, of course, we we get to do the role play, where I put myself in the shoes of the patient. And uh, it's funny because in the package material, I'm instructed to uh, be very relu reluctant in sharing, only sharing a few words in each answer, and hopefully through careful questioning to sort of push the doctor ask me more on my personal life and stress in order to come up with a non-pharmacological treatment. Okay. Hello,你好,今天有什麼不舒服嗎? 好像是讀壓力大
，點樣去舒壓咁樣啦，咁誒、呃、始終都要面對呢個心嘅，咁但係唔好太過粗魯。我咁我可我可以學你少少嘢，如果你需要時就去誒食啦，不過誒、呃、可以盡量試下去唔好誒可以舒壓誒唔好。Well, you uh you saw some statements of empathy. You know, you're saying that oh yeah, I have gone through similar life uh, as a medical student uh, in this university. Yeah, it's it's very stressful. Okay, different people might face different things. Okay, so uh, of course that means as a doctor, it's simple to give drugs. Okay. But you may not be able, if you give drugs, you may not be able to sort out the problem. On the other hand, you may give, uh, of course, if he hasn't slept for a few nights, okay, the drug may help, okay, uh, at least some rest. But if you want to give the drug, uh, it may have handover effect, uh, may reduce uh, his ability to concentrate on something. So um, if the patient asks you about the drugs, you can, uh, you can mention about the pros and cons of using drugs. Uh, it's just like a whitewash effect, but you still have to sort out the problem. Uh, it's more complex. It's not just a, a doctor's business. You may suggest resources for help and support. Uh, uh, don't ignore this sort of problem. You may have any result of suicide. So you may not be able to help, but you may be mobilizing resources like counseling and whatever. You have, to, of course, you know it. You have to know how to assess all those. And and I guess that's uh, another interesting thing that uh, that is heavily sort of overlooked in modern medicine, where people in their perception would just think, okay, you're going to the doctor to just get medicine, but but actually, pharmacological intervention is just one of the very small part of what a doctor could help. Of course, we always say that treat the person, not the disease. And that's, that's where that sort of comes from. How a medical student organize their learning in math? Happy to have you walk walk us through your learning. So I make columns of me watching the lectures, making anki for the lectures, studying it once and studying it twice. Obviously, the goal is to do these two while watching the lecture, but it's difficult. So I make notes. On the side, such and as myself. although yeah, so we need to memorize <laughs> enzyme names. Difficult, difficult, easy. There's a lot of annotation I miss. Yeah. Use notes from seniors, seniors, seniors. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Welcome to the life of a medical student. <laughs> <laughs>